Hello, Michael here with another Renderman tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at rendering up this mushroom that we made earlier in the week in ZBrush. So let's dive right in. Um, if you don't already know how to do displacement maps and normal maps, I recommend you check out those tutorials first because I'm not going to be going through that again. I'm just going to be looking at the overall uh, look development of this particular uh, mesh. So the first thing we're going to do is um, jump into the Hypershade editor. Um, you're going to want to assign a surface shader to it. I have already done so. If you select your mesh and click that button, it'll give you a Pixar surface shader. Then once we jump into the Hypershade editor, if we just select our mesh and map it out, you'll see here that I've already connected the uh, normal map and the displacement map. Um, and I'm going to reconnect the texture map so you can see how I do that. So I'm just going to type in Pixar Texture hit tab and type in Pixar texture and then we'll just open up our texture uh, which is this one here. So the simple way of doing this obviously is just running your uh, result into your uh, result RGB into your diffuse color and if we just take a quick render as it is uh, actually also I will mention that I've also just added a touch of specularity to the face color so um, a value of 0.045 on the face color uh, and I've increased the roughness to 0 0.360. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Looks like a mushroom. Um, it's got the displacement and the normal map uh, functioning correctly on it. Um, you will notice that um, when I projected it, I actually missed a couple of artifacts. Um, so when you're projecting in ZBrush, make sure you look out for that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm just going to roll with this one for now. Also worth mentioning, I'm using the uh, standard RenderMan 3 point light setup, which you can get from the preset browser. Um, and I've also created a dirt sort of uh, ground there. So yeah, that's a, that's a mushroom. It's it's not particularly exciting as it is. It could be quite effective depending on what you're trying to do. But uh, I think we could take it a little bit further than just using the diffuse map. So uh, there's a couple of different ways you can look at this depending on what your situation is or what, what your scene is going to end up looking like. So back in the Hypershade Editor, uh, one of the first things you might want to do is have a look at adding some subsurface scattering. So if we go to select your main... Um, texture node, I hit three, and then we're going to type in single. Uh, and that way we can connect our Pixar texture RGB to the um, single scatter color, which is this input here. So basically that means that the surface is going to have this same color as our, as our texture, which is in our diffuse channel. Um, and then it's going to have uh, this white color as the subsurface color. Now we can actually do something a little bit more interesting. If we type in HSL, we get a Pixar HSL node and we can run our input RGB into the input of that and then the result RGB into the single scatter MFP, which is the multiple uh, free path color. So that way we can actually use the same, the same texture as our diffuse color, but we can actually adjust the hue of it. So I'll do that on the fly so you can see how it sort of looks. Uh, actually, this is going to be a little bit easier to see if we've just got one light. So I'm just going to remove those two other lights so we can see the back side. So now you'll see as I shift the hue. So you've got this green hue on the outside there. And now it's blue. And if we go back to the center, it'll be the more close to the red. Um, and then once again, sort of more of a violet color. So this can be a good way of um, altering your subsurface scatter color, which will just sort of add a little bit more magic to it overall. Um, I've used this um, in a couple of other tutorials. Um, also, um, what I've done is I've increased the backside gain. So the, the backside gain is probably a bit high at the moment. Um, we're just looking for subtlety here. So just a little bit of glow there will probably do it. And also, um, the reflection is probably causing a little bit of issues there, but it's not too bad. Uh, depending on your lighting scenario, you'll want to decide as to how much uh, subsurface scattering you have, uh, and maybe decrease or increase the model mean free path, uh, the the mean free path. So that's just the um, the distance in which the light is penetrating the surface, and that's relative to your specific um, mesh. Uh, and as always, with IP uh, with subsurface scattering, you will need to update your IPR every now and then if you're noticing it's not really making a difference. So yeah, if you want to do crazy amount of backside gain, you can do so and then you can obviously see that you get a much more uh, obvious effect. Um, I'm going to keep the 
backside gain at about 0.1 I think and yeah so it's just a subtle little effect but um particularly the underside it's good to have it otherwise just having the rays coming from the top uh, it gets a little bit dark under there under there um, but the, that's just a sort of starting point and depending on your lighting setup if you've got a much harder light on it this will become obviously more more obvious and depending on the shape of your mushroom etc uh, but the, another thing that I like to do with this sort of mesh is run uh, the HSL also into like a glow. So if I just select uh, the main node and type in glow, we can affect the glow color with the, um, with the HSL output, which is the same as what we're using for the subsurface scattering. Uh, I'm just going to use the attribute editor here so we can see it a little bit easier. And I'll close the outliner. So if I just scroll down to glow, um, I've just got it set to a very low value, 0 0.005 at the moment. And you can see that um, combined with the subsurface scattering, it does actually create quite a cool effect. Um, and we're getting a lot more saturation there. Again, you can adjust the HSL to get a different effect. Um, and you could also increase it quite a bit more. So sort of 0.1, you'll see that it starts to get a little bit more uh, ethereal. So your lower values are gonna be a lot um, a lot more subtle and for outdoor environments it's probably what you're looking at unless you're looking to get some very specific sort of highlights um, if I just turn that light off there and then jump back in and affect that glow again turn that glow all the way up so you can see you get quite a different effect um, much more cartoony um, so yeah, it depends on what you're going for if you've got a cave and you want these to illuminate parts of the wall you can do this um, my warning would be uh, that using glow can be quite noisy so um, use it sparingly if possible or uh, isolate it from any areas that you don't want the glow to affect um, using light linking uh, or render layers but yeah I think something like um, 0.005 is quite cool and I'll just re-enable that light yeah it's quite good um, when you're working with subsurface scattering because not only do you get the the more fleshy sort of look um, particularly on those colored areas but you probably see it there as well if you used a different color uh, like on the stem if you used a different subsurface color maybe something a little bit more saturated you start to see that effect more um, but you also on the back side get a little bit more glow so if you've got a camera moving around it can be quite a cool effect as well um, but because of the way this is shaped uh, depending on where the camera is, it can look a lot of unusual because of the subsurface scattering. So uh, this will all be dependent on your particular setup uh, with your mesh and with your lighting scenario. Uh, but like this is, you know, with a single key light, um, if maybe if I had a more saturated color there, it would probably suit a little bit more. But you can see that's quite effective. So um, this was sort of a little more of like a not so much a hard tutorial I just wanted to give sort of some outlines and some ideas as to things you could do with a couple of different nodes um, with the mushroom um, and I'm just going to be bashing out a couple of mushrooms this weekend probably just um, playing with some different styles um, and rendering them up so if you follow me on Instagram you can sort of check out what I'm doing there and maybe get some ideas for your own stuff as well um, but that's pretty much all. If you've got any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. Um, and if you like the video, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube. If you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these tutorials every week, uh, which will hopefully inspire you to do things of your own. And if you want to stay up to date any further, uh, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.